It was the end of a century, and these actors saw it out in style. I'm just an ordinary guy with nothing to lose. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 decade-defining actors of the 1990s. Look at this! My first day as a woman, I'm getting hot flashes. For our series on the top 10 decade-defining male actors per period, we've made our choices based on a combination of their commercial success, their box office scores, their productivity, their awards, and how they helped set the tone and raise the standard in Hollywood for the era. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Number 10, Robin Williams. Hello! Ah! Robin Williams earned two Academy Award nominations in the 80s and was nominated twice more in the 1990s. So excited. <laughs> For his role as a homeless man in The Fisher King, he fell just short of the accolade. But for his depiction of Dr. Sean McGuire in Good Will Hunting, he nabbed the golden statuette. Your move, Chief. A hugely acclaimed actor, his role as the genie in Disney's Aladdin proved that star power and voice casting was a recipe for success. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck! And his part in Mrs. Doubtfire showed that even in a dress, Williams was a king of the screen. I'm here, guys. In some form. Number nine, Kevin Spacey. Detective! You're looking for me. The winner of two Oscars within the decade, Kevin Spacey scooped the Best Supporting Actor award for his performance in The Usual Suspects. It's all there and a Best Actor win for his depiction of Lester Burnham's midlife crisis in American Beauty. I rule! His sophisticated style, professional approach, and careful delivery led to many a casting as the thinking man, the scheming man, or the evil man. I'm not special. He's a good guy off camera, but there's something about him that just frightens us. I mean, the devil himself? How do you shoot the devil in the back? What if you miss? Number eight, Nicolas Cage. Well, gosh. Nick Cage's defining moment came in 1995 when he won the Academy Award for Best Actor. Let's do it to it. Scooping it up for his portrayal of suicidal alcoholic Ben Sanderson in Leaving Las Vegas, Cage's performance was deemed tragic and all too true to life. I don't remember if I started drinking because my wife left me or my wife left me because I started drinking. Films like The Rock and Con Air saw the actor soar to mainstream popularity as the public took to his regular guy personality. I said, put the bunny back in the box. That being said, he's not your average man. He's actually the nephew of famed movie director Francis Ford Coppola but his acting credentials speak for themselves. There's time left. You can have more money. You can, you can drink all you want. Just stay. That's what I want. I want you to talk or, or listen. Just stay. Number seven, Mel Gibson. Scotland is free! This man's career spans either side of this particular decade. But in the 90s, Gibson proved to be at his versatile best. Oh, this just gets better and better. Earlier films like Maverick showed that he could be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like being teased. While the third and fourth installments of the Lethal Weapon franchise combined his wit with weaponry. I'm not too old for this shit. Braveheart was his brightest moment, though. And for his portrayal of William Wallace, he won huge critical acclaim. Gibson got real good in the 90s. For one chance. Just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Number six, Denzel Washington. When they fired Andrew Beckett because he had AIDS, they broke the law. Washington rode the wave of his 1989 Oscar win into the next 10 years and he dominated cinema screens. His supporting actor role in Glory led to a series of high-profile parts, 
beginning with a role as the black nationalist leader Malcolm X. The following year, he starred in the Oscar-winning picture Philadelphia. Continue. And in 1999, he portrayed former boxer slash wrongly imprisoned convict Reuben Carter in The Hurricane. I've been locked up for 30 years. For Washington, the 90s were a whirlwind of success. He put me in prison. Love's gonna bust me out. Number five, Brad Pitt. It's only after we've lost everything that we're free to do anything. Brad Pitt is about as box office as they come. But it wasn't always that way. He endured criticism during the early 90s, largely due to his apparent one-dimensional Hollywood hunk quality, as evidenced by his breakthrough part in Thelma and Louise. Ladies, gentlemen, let's see who wins the prize for keeping their cool. Simon says, everybody down on the floor. The tide began to turn when he starred as a detective in Seven. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a homicide. He was nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Oscar in 12 Monkeys, and he played Tyler Durden in cult classic Fight Club. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. Ten years before, he was just a pretty boy. By the time 2000 rolled around, he was a very pretty boy who could act. Very few of us here are actually mentally ill. I'm not saying you're not mentally ill. All for all I know, you're <coughs> crazy as a loon. Number four, Kevin Costner. It's difficult to accept this. The early 90s were for Kevin Costner a huge Hollywood heyday. At the turn of the decade, he directed and starred in a huge critical and commercial success, Dances with Wolves. You have everything from the soldiers' work? Yes. There's nothing for me there. That's good. An epic historic western, he went on to recreate more iconic American history as the district attorney in Oliver Stone's JFK. You lie to the grand jury, you've been lying to me. I'm gonna charge you with perjury. Dabbling in British legend too, Costner also had success as medieval hero Robin Hood. What do we need that the force cannot provide? He created history by recreating history. This is English courage. And by 1992, he was still at the top this time keeping Whitney Houston safe as the bodyguard. I can't protect you like this. It's, uh, it's impossible. The odds are all on his side. I will do whatever you say. Number three, Will Smith. You will see that there is nothing to be scared of. Will Smith's box office career came about through his work on the smaller screen. <laughs> The NBC sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air thrust Smith into the limelight and confirmed him as a first-class actor. Let's come up with something better that you could call me. What would you prefer? Take this. His royal freshness. That's dope! <laughs> From then on, roles in Bad Boys and Men in Black confirmed him as a leading face in the increasingly popular action-comedy crossover genre. And to be honest, I'd appreciate it if you eased up off my back about it. And Independence Day assured audiences he could save the world. Welcome to Earth. Early in his career, Smith had stated his intentions to be the biggest movie star on the planet. And in the 90s, he very nearly got there. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. All right, that's it. Now it's my turn! Number two, Jim Carrey. That's a lovely accent you have. New Jersey? Austria. Austria? <laughs> well then, <laughs> good day, mate. Bursting onto the scene with more noise and facial expressions than the average actor, Jim Carrey first tasted fame as Ace Ventura Pet Detective. I'm gonna execute a button hook pattern super slow mo. <sighs> <laughs> 1994 turned out to be a very busy year for the bonkers comedian, as The Mask and Dumb and Dumber confirmed him as a box office smash. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Four years later, Carey gained considerable critical acclaim for his role as the title character in The Truman Show. In case I don't see ya. 
Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. A very funny man. He could also act up a storm. A deserved wearer of our silver medal. Tell Scarlet I do give it him. Pardon me. Before we unveil our pick for decade-defining actor of the 1990s, here are a few honorable mentions. Get busy living, or get busy dying. That's nice. That's very good news. Um, suddenly, there was a terrible roar all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats, all swooping and screeching and diving around the car. And a voice was screaming, holy, holy Jesus, Jesus, what are, are these goddamn animals? animals? What are you doing? Oh, God, no, please, no! For some reason, I thought of my first fight with Tyler. No! I know kung fu. Number one, Tom Hanks. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. If ever an actor inspired a generation, it's this man. Shall we? Tom Hanks enjoyed impossible success throughout the 90s. Sleepless in Seattle established his rom-com credentials, while Philadelphia proved he could handle heavier roles. I, th I, th I think I need, I need to go to the hospital. Next came Forrest Gump, for which he won his second Oscar. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. Then Toy Story, and then Saving Private Ryan, which was labeled one of the finest war movies ever made. Your brothers were killed in combat. Which, which one? All of them. With his long list of blockbusters, we could go on and on, and we still wouldn't do justice to Hank's achievements. He's a living legend. I feel heartfelt sorrow for the mother of Private James Ryan. I'm willing to lay down my life and the lives of my men, especially you, Ryden, to ease her suffering. Do you agree with our list? Which 1990s actor do you think is the most iconic? For more classic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Thank you. No more questions.